China, EMP threat, the People's Republic of China military doctrine, plans and capabilities for electromagnetic pulse or EMP attack by Dr. Peter Vincent Pry, Executive Director of the EMP Task Force on National and Homeland Security, published June 10th, 2020. Now this dossier, which I'm holding and about to present to you, is available free to download as it's been released to the public. And it may be the most important document ever for you to understand in your preparedness plans. Now, many people are talking about this EMP attack, but we're going to break it down on this 14-page dossier tonight. Stick with us. The Chinese military doctrine, EMP attack decisive. China has long been known about nuclear high-altitude electromagnetic pulse. That's hemp. You're looking at a diagram of hemp. And they have invested in protecting military forces and critical infrastructure from high-altitude electromagnetic detonation, hemp, and other nuclear weapons. And they've done this as early as the Cold War and continuing till today. China has hemp simulators and defense and defensive programs that are almost certainly more robust than any in the United States. China's military doctrine regards nuclear hemp attack as an extension of the information or cyber warfare and deserving highest priority as the most likely kind of warfare in the future. Chinese military writings are replete with references to making hemp attacks against the United States as a means of prevailing in war. The foremost People's Liberation Army textbook on information warfare, Shang Wang's World War of the Third World War, Total Information Warfare, explicitly calls upon China to prepare to exploit hemp offensively and to defend against it. Now, what does that mean? Well, more propaganda ahead. S stick with us. Here's our first quote of tonight. With their massive destructiveness, long-range nuclear weapons have combined with highly sophisticated information technology and information warfare under nuclear deterrence. And here's a CRS report for Congress, High Altitude Electromagnetic Pulse, or HEMP, and the High Power Microwave, HPM, devices and their threat assessments as of July 21st, 2008. And the reason we're bringing this up is just to add insult to injury. Now, as soon as its computer networks come under attack and are destroyed, the country will slip into a state of paralysis. The lives of people will be ground to a halt. Therefore, China should focus on measures to counter computer viruses, nuclear electromagnetic pulse, and quickly achieve breakthroughs in those technologies in order to equip China without delay, with equivalent deterrence that will enable it to stand up to the military powers and the information age and neutralize and check the deterrence of Western powers, including the U.S., which is why this was written. Now, Chinese military doctrine closely associates cyber attacks with nuclear hemp attacks as part of its combined operation in what they call total information warfare, cyber bugs and hacking are the tip of the spear. The functional equivalent of scouts and sappers who do reconnaissance and secretly prepare the beaches for the arrival of D-Day. Or like the motorcycle troops that preceded the heavy armored divisions of Germany's Blitzkrieg. Therefore, China's cyber attacks, for example, most notoriously in June 2015 on computers in virtually every federal agency in the U.S. stealing sensitive information on millions of federal employees, reportedly on every employee of the federal government, some say, should be regarded as a possible practice or preparation for the total information warfare, including, but not limited to, nuclear hemp attack. 
Isn't it funny how hemp is legal almost over the entire U.S. and we're about to get attacked by it? Now, we're just browsing through this 14-page dossier to not keep you bored. But let's talk about China has super EMP weapons. Do they? Well, of course they do. Chinese open source military writings describe the possession of super EMP weapons. As seen above, for example, in the Arctic, from the PRC, that's the People's Republic of China Air Force Engineering University, how to execute a nuclear hemp attack on Taiwan using super EMP weapons was described in an interview with one of the founders of the People's Republic of China's nuclear weapons program and deputy director of the Institute of Theoretical Physics, General Lin Qingqing. I can't even make that up. Taiwan, Taiwan military intelligence in open sources credits China with having a super EMP nuclear weapon based on a design information stolen from the U.S. nuclear weapons lab. Hmm. Taiwan is generally regarded as the nation's most expert on China's military capabilities, doctrine, and planning, just as Israel is generally regarded as the nation's most expert on military threat posed by its neighbors. This dossier goes on. Hemp appears to be the key victory in China's military doctrine. Isn't that crazy? Against U.S. aircraft carriers and Taiwan. For example, from the official newspaper of the Shanghai Communist Party Central Committee. And I quote, The possession of electromagnetic pulse bombs or missiles will provide the conditions to completely destroy an aircraft carrier fleet and the way to complete victory in dealing with aircraft carrier fleets, according to using a bomb to deal with aircraft carriers. An article in the newspaper of China's People's Liberation Army, the PLA, right, notes that the United States is more vulnerable than any other country in the world to attacks by EMP and cyber warfare. That's simply because our network of information technology is very high here. And you can see here, looking at the graphic, EMP area bursts at 30, 120, and 300 miles above the surface. And their effects, broader and broader ranges. They can literally take out everything in the United States with one single pulse. Let's talk about China's, the possibility of hypersonic weapons. And this is going to blow your mind. We've been doing research all night on these, the EMP threat and these hypersonic weapons. We're going to break it down for you. China is on the verge of deploying or has already deployed hypersonic weapons that could potentially be armed with nuclear or non-nuclear EMP warheads, greatly increasing the threat of surprise attack against the U.S. forces in the Pacific and against the United States. Now, when I read this, all I could think of was Pearl Harbor. It's their playbook, folks. Sneak attack. Hypersonic weapons are of two types, if you did not know. Hypersonic glide vehicles, or HGVs, and hypersonic cruise missiles, or HCMs. HGVs are boosted by a missile to an altitude of 40 to 100 kilometers, where they skim along the upper atmosphere unpowered, using control surfaces on the glide vehicle to maneuver unpredictably and silently, evading missile defenses, and highly accurate when they descend to the target. HCMs are launched by an aircraft and have engines to power themselves through the upper atmosphere, where like HGVs, they speed towards the target evasively and accurately. Now, both HGVs and HCMs are capable of extraordinarily high speeds. Wait for it. Depending on design, the speeds range from five times the speed of sound, which would be 60 to 100 kilometers per, sec per hour, to up to 25,000 kilometers per hour, which would be five times that, which would be 25 times the speed of sound. The combination of hypersonic speed, flat non-ballistic trajectory that flies below the radar, and maneuverability that frustrates interception and provides for highly accurate delivery 
makes HGVs and HMCs an unprecedented threat to strategic stability and the balance of power in the world. Now, former chief of U.S. Pacific Command, well, was not very happy. And in February 2018, was quoted as saying, hypersonic weapons were one of the range of advanced technologies where China was beginning to outpace the U.S. military, challenging its dominance in the Asian Pacific region for the first time ever. Are we ready? It doesn't matter if we're ready as a nation. It matters if you're ready as an individual. We are all sovereign, if you did not figure that out yet. You are not a statist. You do not have to bow down to the state and their mandates. Because according to the Constitution, citizens have rights. Isn't that amazing? Now, you have the right to protect yourself from hemp attacks. And we're going to get to that in just a minute. But let's talk about hemp satellites. China has the technical capability to make a surprise hemp attack by nuclear arms satellite orbited over the South Polar region to evade U.S. BMEWS radars and national miss missile defenses as planned by Russia during the Cold War with its secret weapons, the Fractional Orbital Bombardment System, or FOBs. China also has the technical capability to clandestinely orbit a nuclear armed satellite or satellites to be maintained in orbit for years until needed to make the surprise attack against the U.S., India, Russia, or other targets. We warned that, uh, against this with North Korea as well. So this is not new news. Let's talk about China's EMP defenses. Well, if they're this deep into the production of hemp weapons, their defenses had to be deployed first. It seems highly likely that China's development of offensive hemp capabilities would inform and drive the development of defensive capabilities too, especially protection of critical infrastructures necessary to support their war effort. Moreover, China's proximity to North Korea and Taiwan, both potentially nuclear flashpoints for a hemp event, would likely raise Beijing's concern about protecting its critical infrastructure in this dangerous neighborhood. The neighborhood is made more dangerous by China's own plans, described in open sources to make hemp attacks against Taiwan and U.S. aircraft carriers that may try intervening by entering the Taiwan Straits. A nuclear hemp attack on Taiwan or on U.S. carriers in the Straits could have catastrophic collateral effects against China if its critical infrastructures are unprotected. Therefore, it, it is completely logical to conclude that they have hemp protections currently. Now, China's no first use fiction. This is the idea that China claims that it's only going to use these hemp weapons as retaliatory to a nuclear attack. But unfortunately, we all know what happened at Pearl Harbor. Hello? Many of China's experts in government and academia, and especially among anti-nuclear activists like the Union of Concerned, Sci Concerned Scientists and the Federation of American Scientists are unworried about China's rapidly growing nuclear capabilities, hypersonic and super EMP weapons, because Beijing's official policy promises that they will not be first used to employ nuclear weapons in a conflict. I just do not believe that. Beijing promises that their nuclear forces are for deterrence and retaliation only, not for aggression. Well, that means that their high-altitude EMP detonation will be the initiation of the war, and that will shut down the grid, shut down all communications, and basically cripple the entire military infrastructure. Did you just pick that up? I just put it down. It took a few minutes. No first use for China does not withstand the test of common sense at all. No conservative military planner would adopt no first use when China lacks BMEWS and satellite early warning systems that would enable China to launch the such a tactical warning. They won't even know it if they're going to be attacked. So how could they claim that they're using it for retaliation? This is nonsense. 
completely. No first use would doom China's nuclear deterrent to certain destruction by U.S. or Russian convention or nuclear first strike to a nuclear first strike by India. And it goes on and on. So let us conclude. China's military doctrine, including numerous examples presented here of using hemp attack to win on the battlefield, defeat U.S. aircraft carriers, and achieve against the U.S. homeland and surprise, quote unquote, Pearl Harbor writ large. It's replete with technical and operational planning consistent with the nuclear first strike. Indeed, China's classification of hemp attack in a military doctrine as electronic warfare or information warfare indicates that hemp is not even considered a form of nuclear attack, but they would use a nuclear bomb to employ it. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? In 2020, a panel of China's military experts threatened to punish U.S. Navy ships for challenging China's illegal annexation of the South China Sea by making an EMP attack. That's this year, folks. One of the options they considered least provocative because the crew would be unharmed, but most effective because the ship would be disabled. This too, like other evidence, suggests Beijing considers high-altitude EMP detonation or hemp something short of nuclear or even kinetic conflict akin to the gray zone threats like electronic and cyber warfare, which means they're planning on using this in the future. Why wouldn't they? I'm going to leave you reports to the CRS, report for Congress, order code RL32544, high altitude electromagnetic pulse, and high powered microwave devices and the threat assessment. I'll leave you links to both of the graphics so you can get a handle on it. But most importantly, how can we properly prepare for what's coming? The first thing we can do is look into Faraday cages. Here is 10 Faraday cages you can make at home. 10, from tiny to big. The first one is the pasta box, fettuccine in this case. The pasta box Faraday cage will protect your small devices. Then we move up to the cardboard box from Ikea, a bird cage, a trash can, an old wooden ammo box, metal storage cabinet, wood and aluminum screening, cookie or popcorn tins, and keeping the generators, tools, radios, electronics in the original boxes and making them Faraday cages. Now, with all of these cages, you're going to need a bigger area to shield them. And that's why we provided you with a link to metal shed Faraday cages. This is your first defense. When the pulse comes, the metal building takes the charge and grounds it into the ground. Inside of the metal cage, you have all of your additional Faraday cages with your products safely hidden. You can do this with as small as a shed as this 8x8. Even an entire metal house can be the initial Faraday cage. Metal walls, ceilings, and doors make for an effective cage if it is continuously surrounded and grounded. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance during an EMP attack. Get informed. Prepare at the ranch.com. Time is ticking. And this is a boom of information. We can't even make this up. We want to thank all of our one time donors and our Patreons for making this podcast possible. Our only donor is you, you, the viewer with a brain. Prepare at the ranch.com for long term food storage. Get your metal sheds grounded and begin the Faraday cage process of keeping your family safe from EMP attack. Can you imagine if you're one of the few people that have walkie talkies or an electric bike that is capable of being used after the EMP? You might be the most popular person in town. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance when China's EMP threat is ever imminent. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. And be safe, folks. The threat is real, and that's a boom.